Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we've got Rick Martinez. Rick Martinez is a host of Weed to Know Basis Cannabis Podcast. So thanks for being on the podcast. Hey, Josh, it's awesome to be here. I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah, appreciate you being with us. Tell me a little bit about yourself and, and your podcast, what you're up to these days. I know you've been in the industry for a while. Ran into you, uh, MJ BizCon 2018, briefly to say hi. You and your wife were running out. Uh, so I know you've been in the game. I know you've seen a lot. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what you're doing. Yeah, I'll, get, I'll give you kind of the 30,000 foot view, if you like, the peaks, and then uh, we can go into any valleys as you see fit. So by, by trade, I'm a registered nurse. I've been a registered nurse for about 25 years. Um, been in very traditional business, non-cannabis related, um, healthcare, Department of Defense, contracting, CrossFit. It was several years ago that we ventured into our first CBD operation, helping a startup. And that's because we had um, amassed some experience in helping startups and pivoted several times. Um, as you know, and we won't get into these you know, micro details, but it's hard to advertise, it's hard for media, it's hard for bank, and it's hard for all those things, CBD and cannabis. And fast forward was we found ourselves um, really developing our messaging, um, how to develop a message around your brand, around your voice, and not get shut down. And that was the genesis of our, of our show, our media channel, our podcast called Weed to No Basis, which we launched in April of 2019. We're coming up to about 100 episodes. And simply put, Josh, it's a way for us to control our message, to broadcast it across multiple channels, and bring on guests um, in the industry, CBD and marijuana, who are doing things that are um, impactful. Uh, they're entrepreneurs. They're doing things that are going to shift the industry in a positive way. Well, that's great to have a platform to do that because there's a lot of headwinds, roadblocks. Um, you know, laws are changing all of the time, so there's plenty of companies out there. It's hard to differentiate themselves. You could have the coolest product in the world, and yet if no one knows about you, it doesn't matter. And then coupled with that, you have to educate and then sell. You know, the analogy I make is vitamin C, where people take it, they know what it's going to do, even though it doesn't have an effect on you, but there's, there's a trusted brand. And right now, without a platform like yours, without uh, being a household recognized name, uh, there's, there's that dichotomy where it's not the same as uh, you know, vitamin C, where it is going to require a platform to educate and then sell until you have that trust where you can take CBD without having an effect and people come back and buy it again, uh, just in the same way as vitamin C or any other dietary supplement. Yeah, love it. I love that analogy. I've never thought of that. And that's um, the vitamin C. We know we need it. We just don't know why we need it. And we take it. Great analogy. Right. You know, going back to the endocannabinoid system, if you're cannabinoid deficient and you aren't taking CBD, CBG, THC, uh, then your whole circuitry is, is running on fumes. So your immune system, digestive system, all of your systems run on the ECS, on that endocannabinoid system. And if you don't have it in your body, um, you know, then you're on a hope and a prayer, basically. Yeah. And so you need to... Um, yeah, obviously put, put some more cannabinoids in your system, including CBD. Yeah, no doubt. No, no doubt, for sure. So with all of the issues going on in the industry, you, you know, we just saw Tilray write off $112 million because of the uncertainty surrounding CBD. They bought into Manitoba Harvest, huge company. Tilray just got crushed yesterday in the market, something like a 23% drop in one day. And so I don't know if they're going to be able to remain a going concern without either bankruptcy reorganization or just losing a lot of their market share. I mean, their market cap got absolutely annihilated. So if big companies are struggling, I would imagine mom and pops are struggling too, especially being in Texas where it's not, you know, really legal. Uh, you know, CBD, I think, has medicinal allowance, but there is no medical market. There is no rec market where you're at in a lot of other places. And so for smaller companies, you know, how can you take your experience and, and give some advice on recommending what CBD companies can do to promote brands and products? Yeah, you know, those are all great facts. And, and who knows where this is all going to play out or wash out, you know, in the end, and who knows when the end is. Um, and you're right, Texas is, it's an emerging market. It's, um, 
One people might say that we're behind the curve, uh, but here's the beauty. Here's the, here's the perspective I like to bring. And then we'll talk about kind of the marketing and the messaging part is uh, we're all still learning. We, we here in Texas and states like Texas who aren't, who don't have a medical program or a rec program. We're just CBD, if you will, is we get to see and learn from others' mistakes and their successes. So like you're in Washington and Seattle and it's been around there, you know, people say Seattle is the, it's the, epi, the epicenter of, of it all. Uh, California, who knows what's going to happen there. But while there's a rush and there had been a rush and maybe there's a bursting bubble, if you will, um, we get to learn. We get to learn what worked and what didn't work. And in the hope of actually constructing programs, you know, whether it's medical and or recreational in the near future that are that thrive and that are sustainable. So um, I think it's a, it's a great time. Yeah, ask the Tilray's and even the MedMen and people who are um, doing some um, thought we're gonna be the, the shining stars and they may have a different opinion, but we get to watch and learn. Now, as far as the messaging, same thing. This, this is the golden age. You know, they say that, um, uh, what's the phrase? Um, pioneers, get the arrows settlers get the land <clears throat> and so we're seeing a lot of that kind of wash out also in just plain old marketing whether it's instagram or facebook or magazines or billboards um, what's working what's not working and the same argument applies here in texas you know we see what's going on in other states uh, now in texas what's recently changed and we're recording this in early 2020 is um <clears throat> CBD companies with some restrictions can now do billboard advertising, whereas mid 2019, forget about it, you know, and but what that really amounts to Josh is there are companies here in Texas that are able to spend three, four, five thousand dollars a month on billboard advertising, meaning this. There are companies that are doing things um, on the mom and pop scale, but also companies that are doing things on a much bigger scale. They have marketing budget, they have um, vision. And let's tell, talk about the, quickly the mom and pops. There's a place for that too. You know, one could argue that every business starts out as one person, one transaction, one, the first sale. So we can all say, in a sense, maybe that we're all at one point a mom and pop. We all have our day one. So um, I'm really, really optimistic about everything. The mom and pops. <clears throat> um, sure, they may get scooped up or eaten alive by the big companies, but um, it's it's the golden green age. Uh, whether you're in Washington State, you know, Illinois, Massachusetts, or Texas. Yeah, it's an interesting time because if you look at Washington as a petri dish experiment, hopefully places like Texas are, are learning from our mistakes of banning billboards, banning CBD uh, beverages and gummies and uh, understanding that that's not the right way to go. Limiting outside investors, all of these things that other states have have copied for some reason like massachusetts with their billboards and out-of-state investors but uh yeah hopefully texas will learn what to do and what not to do from our mistakes because after six years we're still struggling we still have a felony on marijuana lounges uh in the state so probably the strictest law as it pertains to cannabis cafes making it a felony to maintain and operate so you can buy it but you can't smoke it anywhere so I don't know if that's entrapment, but maybe that's a podcast topic <laughs> for another day. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So being in, in Texas, how do you kind of keep your finger on the pulse? So personally, I would go to a lot of different events. I would go wherever I could, you know, back in 2015, as many places, you know, from Vancouver, BC to Portland, Oregon, traveling to Denver. Um, and so with, with the change in environment, how are you kind of keeping your pulse on the industry in order to adapt and pivot to stay relevant? That's a great question. And, and um, I, I like, I want to answer this with, um, with, with this statement, especially for the ones who are startups or early stage entrepreneurs who may say, well, I can't go to all these events is I like to operate as if I have my last $300 in my wallet. So first thing I do is um, simply put Barnes and Noble. 
because it's free. It's the gas it takes me to get there. And you can read all the latest journals and magazines on what's going on literally around the world. Second thing is you mentioned that, you know, we had the last time we saw each other was MJ BizCon was I go to events and conferences and expos in the cannabis and CBD industry. Uh, you get to talk to people across the country who are active in the growing cultivation, processing, um, retail, you name it. But beyond that, and I think this is something that not a lot of people are considering, or if they are, they're not really doing, is events that are closely related to, but not in cannabis. And here's what I mean. So this month, I'll be speaking at, um, uh, at Bunker Labs. Bunker Labs is a nonprofit for veteran entrepreneurs. Now, there's no immediate synchronicity, but the fact is, those groups are talking about CBD. They're talking about cannabis. And to keep one's pulse, I believe, yes, you need to know what's going on in the industry, but also what people are talking about who are on the fringes or just outside of it. And the veteran community, I'm a veteran myself, veteran community, they're talking about this. Um, I spoke to angel investment groups. These are groups who, uh, for those of all who don't know, angels are high net worth individuals who put their own personal money, generally speaking, into investments. They're looking to get into the industry, but they don't quite understand how to cross the chasm. So books, magazines, because it's generally um, top of mind stuff, conferences and expos, and then that tertiary or third ring is events, people, uh, industries that are on the fringes who are looking to get in because what they want to know is important. Yeah, I think that's a huge piece of advice. Um, you know, starting in 2015 myself, I went to all of those events and there's a lot of, uh, you know, magazines doing this podcast every day kind of keeps me relevant on, on topics and subjects. But uh, the beginning of last year, beginning of 2019, um, I sort of stopped going to a lot of events. I stopped kind of participating in the industry and tried to focus on everything that was non-cannabis. So for example, the World Trade Center being the largest uh, network you know, for business to business in the world, 300 offices in 99 countries. And so I started focusing on working with them to expand uh, the export store and e-commerce platform that they have for international uh, you know, and domestic wholesale orders. So essentially focusing on the non-cannabis industry because it's so much bigger and there are people that are interested, uh, whether it's an airline in, in Canada or um, you know, I met a, a software development engineer at a similar uh, angel in, in investment conference. It wasn't even a conference. It was the Alternative Chartered Investment Analyst Association's Seattle chapter. So if you're, if you're familiar with the CFA, the Chartered Financial Analyst chapter, this is the Chartered Alternative Investment Analyst chapter. So I was on a panel with them. All these people were really interested in it for the same reason you mentioned with the angel investors. And I met a software programmer who wrote a code about three, four years ago, an AI-based algorithm with technical analysis and predictive analytics. So while you're looking at PodX and MJ down 46 and 44%, uh, since August, we are up 38%. That's an 80% swing. So if you saw the market yesterday get absolutely hammered, I guarantee you we didn't lose. Uh, and so meeting those people can lead into other opportunities and give you a different perspective as long as you kind of can get out of your own bubble. I highly recommend once you understand the industry to get out of it as quick as you can. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love that. Get out of your, out of the bubble and, and, um, it's uh, you can't read the label if you're inside the jar. And while everybody wants to jump in the green jar, there's a lot to learn from the people who are on the fringes again. And so, um, um, yeah, for sure. So how do you keep a brand authentic? So not selling out to the sponsor's interest, keeping a, a mission driven business. Maybe we start with that in your own definition. What is a mission driven business? And the follow up is how do you keep that brand authentic? Yeah, those are great questions. And I think it's, uh, it's a mark that a lot of um, early stage or new startups are missing. Uh, generally speaking, we're rushing in because we see an opportunity. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but after a while, we, we start to see the landscape and all the competition. And what's missing is the individual's mission or our individual um, voice or what makes us authentic. And I believe that 
um, I, I like to call it an unfair advantage. So if we're all competing in CBD and people say it's saturated, the unfair advantage is the voice that you bring. As an example, um, I, I, and I'll use me as an example. I'm a veteran, I'm a former enlisted military officer, uh, registered nurse. That's something that very few, if any, CBD startups, media channels can claim. That's unique to me. Um, as such, your question about mission, you know, what is it that's driving the business? What is it a business is trying to accomplish? And, you know, we won't get into mission statements per se, but, you know, a lot of times they they simply exist as a sentence on somebody's website or, you know, a frame on the wall in the, in the dispensary, but it doesn't really come to life. So if a mission, as an example, is to, um, to eradicate the stigma, then it has to cascade into the brand's voice. What is, what is it that that company, whether it's a product or service, is doing to make that mission come to life with the voice of the founders or the brand? And I know it sounds like a lot, but it's actually not. If we just follow the path and make sure that what we say, what we post, what we share is in alignment, then I believe, um, and we've, do, we've done this in other businesses, that we are leaps and bounds ahead of the startup that got into it simply for the opportunity. I hope that makes sense, but it's a differentiator. Indeed it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if, if you look at branding as a whole, branding from my experience has been a simple question of asking what's the highest THC at the lowest price point and then people give you a brand and then you're like, okay, well, that's my brand because that meets my budget. Whereas now we're finding out about full spectrum, broad spectrum and isolate terpenes, all of these other factors are coming in. And so I think eventually, uh, you know, the, the number one and two decision makers is what's the, the price point and what's convenient. But a lot of people choose a brand based on how it impacts them. If they can relate to a brand or to a message, that's the traditional cues for, for purchasing uh, as soon as somebody can see a product and relate to it. I think it's maybe a little bit too early, uh, but like you said, if you can implement that mission and have it come to life, people can relate to that. And that's what's really going to start drawing people in uh, to, to that product as long as it meets those other criteria of it's you know, within their, their convenient factor and, and their price point. Uh, they need to find a, a particular product that they can relate to and having a good mission uh, especially right now, there's a, a lot like Tom Shoes, for example, is famous for giving away free shoes. And that mission-driven business for them is what excelled their whole platform uh, to be where they are now. So a lot of altruistic companies are still in business that maybe should have given up. Maybe they'll survive, maybe they won't. Um, but I think moving forward, if you can't bring that to life, then you're kind of just treading and and kind of wasting time, wasting money. And I believe that there's a lot of those businesses out there who mean well, but just haven't really figured out how to make it seem, you know, legitimate or, or bring that, that mission to life. They failed at it. Yeah. No, without a doubt. No doubt. I think it's, um, it's, it's a fundamental element. If we built a house, we would start with the foundation and um, the mission, even the vision is part of the, your business's foundation without a doubt. So how do you create that loyalty with content and still create business opportunities? Yeah, so um, the words we use, uh, you know, the things we say, even what we wear, you know, I don't, for the folks who are just listening, I wear this t-shirt all the time and I would never have been caught dead with this, Josh, um, <laughs> five years ago. I wouldn't. It was. It wasn't who I was. I, you know, I'm a dad. I'm a father. I'm a. I'm a husband. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm a former military officer. I'm a registered nurse. Um, you know, we have a, a normal quote unquote business, and so this was was not congruent with who I who I was. Uh, there was a turning point where I had to decide. You know, am I going to step out of this cannabis closet and take on a new persona, which anybody can do. And which means I'm going to have to wrap myself differently. And I mean that literally and figuratively, like how I present myself, how I speak to folks, but even the words and language I use. Now I use marijuana, CBD, cannabis. It's part of my vernacular. And a few years ago, they were like four-letter words. So 
where I'm, where I'm coming from with that is it's got to be ingrained in your, in your mind and in your soul or heart. And I know for some folks it sounds woo woo y, but it's not. It really isn't. It's where everything begins. Simon Sinek said, start with why. And he still speaks to that topic to this day. A great example of, of how that comes to life in real life is cars. There's tons of cars. If somebody says, I'm going to go buy a car, um, one of the questions, and I think I talked about this on one episode about branding or, or mission or vision, was um, I said, okay, let's talk about cars and how it relates to the brand you're building and cannabis, because they're not all the same. And I said, when you think of a, a pet owner or somebody who loves their dogs, what kind of car would they likely or dealer would they go to? And they immediately said Subaru. And I'm like, yes. I said, because Subaru has ingrained something in us. They've made their mission and their vision part of what they sell. In other words, they started, I would imagine, with who they wanted to sell to, and they built the car around it. And so we can take that argument to jewelry, to food, fast food versus sit down restaurants and anything. And underneath the product or service is um, the mission vision, but more important and to your question is who we are as the founder. And one more poignant point I'll make is, woe be the cannabis CBD startup that has a website that doesn't show the faces of people who the, are comprised inside of the company. Mm -hmm. I personally, I don't like that. I wanna know who I'm doing business with, who I'm purchasing from. Again, product or service, I wanna see a face. It's a, it's a huge difference to see you, Josh, right here versus if this was just audio only. It mm -hmm. makes a massive difference. So it begins with us internally, our mind and our hearts and our souls and what we say, do, act, think, and portray to the public in every medium, Instagram, speaking, writing, podcasting, interviews, all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do a segment where we analyze uh, pitch decks, so investment deck reviews. And one of the criteria, we have uh, the seven leafs or the seven points to a successful uh, pitch deck. And one of them is, did you describe your team and the product? And a lot of people just don't put the team in there. And for, uh, you know, any investor for a startup, that team is probably more important than your entire product. Uh, and so a lot of people just kind of leave that out. Um, but yeah, so you mentioned stigma. That's kind of a huge thing to, to get over as well as just being authentic and transparent, just letting, um, letting that flow. A lot of people are really worried about what other people think uh, and, and probably limits them. And also, uh, if they aren't transparent, if they aren't authentic, um, then, then how can you relate? I mean, I think it's, uh, there's some fake branding out there. And you can see right through that. And then the lack of branding, you know, you don't really have any, any, uh, it's hard to, to relate to that product. So I think there's a happy medium, obviously, in there in uh, showcasing who you are and what you believe in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you mentioned stigma and I did too. And it's a word that's floated around for a long time. And the stigma, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to reframe that for the listeners or viewers is, uh, you know, a few years ago, the stigma was the plant. It was cannabis, it was weed, it was pot, it was marijuana. Uh, that's no longer, you know, with statistics show that I, I believe 66 or 67 percent, if not higher, of America now, uh, you know, quote unquote, approves of cannabis. The stigma is now around education. It's now around misunderstanding. And li what literally happened, here's an example, this past Friday, like, like this a few days ago, a good friend of mine was at an event here in Central Texas, and hemp and CBD is legal. And um, he was smoking a hemp joint. And I get it. it. They look the same. It smells like pot. You, you can't tell. And what they proceeded to do, long story short, is record his interaction with a peace officer who detained him. And they got it all in recording. And you could tell by the recording, the peace officer, and, and I, I'm an advocate of peace officers. This is not a for or anti anything or go rattle cages. But there was just a fundamental misunderstanding of what it was my friend was consuming. And granted, it looks and smells like weed, but it, it wasn't. And so I go back to my point of the stigma is no longer the plant. The plant is... It's, it's now, in the, it's, it's a hot topic in the elections, no matter where you live. The stigma is now around education. And here's the beauty of that stigma. We can all individually attack that. We no longer need 
um, an advocate to tell us about the goodness of the plant. We can go read about it. We can Google it. We can go to expos and shows, but the stigma is no longer the plant. The stigma is our lack of education around um, the plant and the industry. So before we wrap this up, I want to ask you about opportunities for growth in 2020 and beyond. But before I ask you that, I um, want to ask if there's anything that's new, neat, or niche that you've seen that you want to share, any, any kind of technology or product. Uh, for me, I think the dab tabs are, are fascinating since um, my puppies found shatter, uh, THC shatter on my garage floor that had been there for at least a year and ate it and got high and cost me $700 to pump their stomach. Um, you know, dab tabs are, are fascinating products. So if you haven't seen them, check that out. Um, that would prevent that from happening. Um, is there anything that you've seen new need or niche that you'd like to share? Yeah, actually there is, there's, um, there's a company based in Texas and Again, this is this was new and niche for me, sure. and you know, for somebody who, who lives and breathes cannabis or in a, a, a state that's like California, it may be like, oh, I've heard of that. But a product was recently launched, and I, I was trying to see if I had a sample here on my desk. I get sent a lot of them, but I don't. It's um, a CBD. It's it's a tincture, which is everybody's got one, but it was a tincture formulated with a blend that is has um, allergens in it. And here's what I mean by that. See, in Texas, around this time of the year. Uh, with the blooming and the cedars and all that, that um, allergies here are off the charts. The cedar in the air, the oak in the air uh, with pollination and the allergen, the physician's offices get jammed with people. So there's a company based in Texas that formulated a CBD line that is designed for people with allergies, especially in the state of Texas. So um, kind of cool. Uh, very niche because it's this is the season here, and um, it's it was interesting. I'm just I'm I'm knocking on wood. I'm fortunate I don't suffer from those allergies, but this could be a godsend for people who want their CB want their CBD cake and eat it too and have the <laughs> allergy relief. So it was pretty neat. Yeah, that's interesting. That's that's pretty niche. I haven't seen anything like that. Um, I did see something from True Terpenes a while back. Uh, it was just kind of a product demo, but it was a Indica CBD. Helps with, uh, you know, my wife's, uh, she's got like Crohn's disease, something similar to that. Um, but uh, that that worked. And I haven't seen anything that was CBD Indica. Uh, but yeah, it worked. Interesting. Yeah, Hopefully for sure. That comes out. What do you see the uh, the opportunities in 2020 and beyond for for growth? I know that there was a lot of Canadian companies coming in. We mentioned Manitoba Harvest. Uh, it seems like that's kind of slowed down as the speculation in, in Canada has reached a, a fervor, whereas the valuations in the U.S. seem a little bit better. Um, I'll just say that I don't know if we're going to see a lot of growth for CBD companies, given the market, given the economic conditions right now, given that they've private labeled or white labeled um, with very slow or, or, or small margins. Um, I've said that 85% will probably fail if they don't have an entity in Puerto Rico, uh, being that Puerto Rico is a, an American territory, but they don't have congressional representation. And without congressional representation, you can't have taxation. Puerto Rico is the only place in the world you can go as an American business and not pay federal income tax. So if there's not an entity in Puerto Rico, whether it's a call center, uh, whether it's research and development or manufacturing or growing or anything, uh, I just feel like 8.5 8 out of 10 companies will fail without having uh, a Puerto Rican entity. So where do you see the opportunities for growth in 2020? Interesting. That's an interesting, um, uh, I'm going to have to go back and, and I'm, I'm recording the show notes. So I'm going to have to go back and, and dissect that. I see two areas. Act 20. Act 20 is, uh, is, is what that is under. There's uh, several other ones. If you wanted to personally relocate down there, that's Act 23. Tourism, I think, is Act 73. And then, uh, yeah, so Act 23 is moving down there. Uh, no, 22 is moving down there. Act 73 is tourism and Act 74 is uh, like farming and agriculture. But, um, you know, cannabis and hemp CBD is tourism and medical. And so that's an opportunity for 50% tax credits, 100% tax deductions in some cases, and a 4% corporate tax cap. It's pretty crazy. Interesting. No, I, I see, uh, and I'll be brief, two, two areas. And one of them we're capitalizing on 
Uh, we're about to launch greenseedmedia.com. And that's the first time I've ever said that publicly. We just purchased the URL about in the last few days. Uh, and that's simply put content creation. And I think there's a lot of, of uh, a push towards brand awareness and nothing wrong with that. But here's the thing is if I suddenly become of joshkincaid.com and I go to where you are on the internet or in real life and there's no responsible content, if there's nothing that shows me who you are, that's the gap that's missing. We've been so focused on brand awareness that we haven't focused on responsible, ethical, and authentic brand content. So Green Seed Media and where, where I see an opportunity is for companies to produce simply in a very simple way, three Instagram posts a week that relate to who you are, what you do, why you do it, who you are, what you do, why you do it. Um, and that's, that then creates uh, connection. That connection creates people who have become raving fans. The raving fans eventually become buyers or people who gravitate towards your product. So content creation in a very, very simple way. Second area um, is products like I just mentioned, the CBD that's for people with allergies. And here's why, here's why I mean that. CBD equals salt. Here's what I mean. Is every, there's a lot of companies that are rushing into the space saying, I'm going to own the CBD world. That's like saying 200 years ago, I'm going to own the salt world. Mm -hmm. CBD is an ingredient. Mm -hmm. The opportunity is using CBD and creating something that has longevity that nobody can copy. You know, that we can maybe put... I don't know, just something unique. You know, those CBD pillows that just came out. It's kind of crazy. I just saw an article about it, but who knows? That could be a big thing. And what it really is, it's a CBD infused pillow. Where, I mean, where I'm going with it is that we can't own salt. What we can own are the things that salt creates. We can create recipes. In other words, whether it's in a product or service around CBD that allow us to plow forward into a new vertical, create new things. But um, I think that people are beating the drum of, I'm going to be the number one CBD company around, and there's already 10,000 companies saying that. So think about it as CBD is the ingredient. The opportunity is what can I use that ingredient to create that I can then own and claim as my own unique unfair advantage. Yeah, I think the Kinesio tape is a really good example of something that's unique that already existed um, that you can use, but that instead of just kind of being a tape, it also has some holistic properties to it. It can uh, help you with endurance or pain or, or otherwise. Uh, we have a, a medical Band-Aid called Candaid, and so it's a military top 10 award winner for reducing pain, reducing the healing time and reducing scarring. So just taking something that is normal, but then changing it, making it, you know, we want to make it hemp, uh, but it is um, something that, that uh, is unique um, for a variety of reasons. It's non-latex, 10% of the population is allergic to latex. So like you said, finding something that um, you can already incorporate. I don't know if, if yoga pants and, and pillows are the way to go. Um, <laughs> But, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll let yeah. the decide on that one. <laughs> awesome. All right, Rick, I appreciate you being on the podcast. How can people get a hold of you? Easiest way is Instagram is our go-to. They can go to my personal page, which is the at sign and then Planet Boy, one word, Planet Boy. And, of course, We to No Basis. It's the at sign, We, do, we to No Basis. And um, those are the simplest ways. We have links to everything else we do. And, um that's where we showcase who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Um, awesome. All right, that's Rick Martinez. He's host of Weed to No Basis podcast and all over, you know, Planet Boy. He's everywhere. Hi, right, Rick. Appreciate you being on the podcast. Thanks, Josh. I really appreciate your time too, brother. Peace yeah. out. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't. And I'm out.